we're told China's off the boil. Well, here's a trade that's going absolutely gangbusters. Well, she's successfully brought drugs across the border before, and this is the second time she's done it. The drug trade flooding in to propel China's party scene and chasing all that new money. <laughs> Methamphetamine, ecstasy, heroin, tons of it, as drug culture spreads like wildfire. If you can get these drugs to Australia, you can imagine how much more profit there would be. <laughs> We're heading to seldom seen corners of this dramatically changing place as foreign correspondent investigates the other China boom, one that leads all the way to our own front door. This is remote dramatic territory a river forming part of a border that runs for thousands of kilometres between China and its emerging neighbour Myanmar, what we used to call Burma. You might expect large fences and guards on patrol, but here the official borders of countries mean little to people who've travelled and intermingled for centuries. Well, this is a pretty porous border. As you can see, there are lots of people moving back and forth across the river. We've just walked down here, jumped on the first boat there was, paid the guy, come along and... What? Here we are. Now I'm in Burma. There's a brisk trade here. Myanmar has been opening up and China has an ever-growing affluence. <laughs> Yet to buy Chinese goods, poor Burmese farmers need money. And in order to get money, some are prepared to transport a very dangerous cargo to the north. Hey! With not an official in sight, the potential to ferry illegal drugs across points like this is clearly substantial. None of the people here speak Chinese, so I can't ask them how busy it is down here normally, but it seems like it's just boat after boat coming through, and the trucks are bringing goods from Burma across to China and also back in the other direction. The home of the Golden Triangle, Myanmar has long been a major source of the world's heroin. Now on top of that, there are new drugs coming out of here, and via China, they'll end up as far away as Australia. So we've come here to follow the drugs and to gauge the size of a problem considered so serious it's recently led to joint operations by Australian and Chinese police. Former police officer Professor Wu Jiang is now one of China's foremost experts on the drug trade. We ask him if Myanmar's increased ice production is in direct response to Chinese consumption. 对这个主要是Yunnan province is a lush green corner of China. Its remote location has spared it the excesses of development. Here you can find the bustling border town of Reili. Part of it has been given special economic zone status to try and boost commerce between China and Myanmar. 
Here, Burmese workers can be seen in droves looking for work in local factories. Others come to do business. There are plenty of visitors with all the right paperwork, but countless numbers without. The border fence in the middle of town is dotted with large holes. So we sit across from one of these illegal entry points and watch. Through they come, one after another. Some pause first to check. Others just race through. This is only 100 metres from the main official entry point. And in broad daylight, they cross, and they cross, and they cross. We decide to approach the young men on the Myanmar side of the border for a chat and speak to them through a translator. It seems they want to defend the credibility of this particular illegal entrance to China. If anything, a few hundred daily crossings would be an underestimation. Dozens come through in just the short time we're here. If drug trafficking is skyrocketing as suspected, then it must hit these border communities first as it winds its way north. So we go looking for someone who knows the local trade. We meet a young man who's prepared to talk about the drug situation in Reili on condition of anonymity. <laughs> He tells us that those using drugs regularly in the town vary from Chinese to Burmese, some are students, some are business people. How he guides us through Reili, down this town's small, vibrant streets, to a particular little corner. And soon after we arrive, the customers are turning up. This man walks across the street to a doorway which will be very busy tonight. He indicates the quantity, and in front of a small child, he hands over cash in exchange for drugs. Then he goes off to find somewhere safe to take them. This is a humming part of town, and many will go through this doorway. We can't see what's going on inside, but there's plenty of movement in the street. A man in green waits outside. Eventually, a woman in white emerges and approaches him. Again, 
It's money going one way and drugs the other. She counts his change and then hands it over. As soon as the coast is clear, he walks away. Given the ease with which we've spotted these transactions, it's hard to imagine that the local authorities are not fully aware of this situation. The man in green likes what he's seen, so he comes back for more. These are only small purchases, but Chinese police statistics cast them in a much bigger light. Nearby, Burmese poppy cultivation was up 33.8% last year, the equivalent of 60 tonnes of heroin. In 2012, local Yunnan police seized nine tonnes of ice coming out of Myanmar, 26% more than the year before. And the deals keep coming. In full public view, the drugs are prepared. The preferred method of consumption here is smoking, even for heroin and methamphetamine. Yet increasingly, in what was once a heroin zone, this is now becoming an ice town. Ha 的 roads out of Reili are all heading north. And for drugs being smuggled into China, there's a well-trodden path. For most, the first stop is the regional capital, where onward distribution will be organised. I'm here at the Kunming Narcotics Bureau. There are more than 160 police here. Apparently, this is the largest drug squad in China, and we've been invited here to come and have a chat. Wang Zhenglong is a young intelligence officer, and to give us an idea of how busy they've been, he shows us some of the drugs police have confiscated lately. We see ketamine, also known as Special K, and a pillowcase of morphine. There's heroin cut into blocks for convenient concealment and in smaller pieces to fit into a condom for internal body secretion. Chinese police seized 7.3 tonnes of heroin last year, but methamphetamine was double that. In 2012, ice seizures went from 14 to over 16 tonnes and were shown large bags of it in various levels of purity. My jigger should do a chain, okay, good drama do a chain. Number two, all the nigger chain. Shampoo don't matter. Dai. It's the same. You didn't mind the part, I should wish a patient. Who should cry eager? Ten thousand tablets at ten bucks a pop, so I'm holding a hundred thousand dollars worth of drugs here. It's quite a bit. Of course, that's the price in Yunnan province. The further these narcotics are transported from the border, whether it be inside machine parts, hollowed out shoe heels or wooden artefacts, the more profit there is to be made, as the price doubles and triples upon arrival in China's megacities. Shanghai is the gleaming citadel at the heart of China's booming east coast. It's a 
massive port town, a thriving business centre, a magnet for foreigners and home to some 23 million people. If you were going to build a city to promote the drug trade in China, it'd probably look like Shanghai. This metropolis is an affluence factory, to the point where it's mocked by the rest of China for having such a superficial and greedy outlook. But when it comes to drug taking, many analysts think a much more important factor than disposable income is a newfound social acceptance of drugs, and not only here. There was a time not so long ago when it was hard to find a young person in China who'd taken illegal drugs. Their friends would have thought they were freaks. But in many circles now, it's seen as a totally normal and acceptable practice. Shimiado We meet a Shanghai woman who at one time got into methamphetamine. And why not? The feelings were great, she was with her friends and having the time of her life. Dajahawan Friday night in Shanghai, so naturally the kids are heading out to play. It was probably inevitable that as China opened up to all things foreign, illegal drugs would eventually spread through cities like this in larger numbers. And as this is a country that doesn't know how to do things in half measures, when you're into it, you're into it. What's more, Chinese people are early adapters. According to police research, the new trend is to order drugs over the internet. Some dealers even use official fast couriers to make a drop. And according to some experts, while economic growth may have fanned Chinese drug use, a really big expansion might be in the wings if the economy actually falters. If China 假如說如果我們發現我們經濟停滯了或者社會管理比較混亂了或者出現社會動盪了那麼這種情況中國的毒品問題會爆發性的增長也可能就達到了可能
that's not just because some might turn to drugs when times are tough to dull the pain. It's also because people might see the narcotics trade as a potential replacement for lost business opportunities in other areas. Yet, as with all highs, there's the come down. Our woman hit rock bottom when her son, who was once a good student, was nearly thrown out of school. She was picked up by police and sent to rehab. These days she's clean, has a new job, and her son has made it into university. Yet the old times still linger in her memory. Uh,我的父母都很好很好。对的,而且就是,啊,就是我也就是跟以前一样啦。嗯,就是好像就感觉说自己就像没有吸过毒的人。当然,肯定是在自己的心灵深处是有那么一个小小的角落,但是我觉
真係做得松啊！啊，做得對不起張生啊！Rehabilitation complex is rolling out a massive attempt at healing in response to an industrial sized problem in China. Yet, if you think this is a concern, it could even hit you closer to home.